Unfortunately, we're done talking about food for now. Yunji didn't love this Airbnb. Look at What's up everyone? I'm interesting. I retired in 2021 to travel neat full time. Today we'll be talking about how much it costs to live, stay, or work remotely from Guadalajara. I will be sharing our actual costs for two people across multiple categories that the future of me will throw here. Stay tuned till the end of the video to see our total spend for the month and see how close we came to our budget. If you enjoy this video at any point, like or comment. And if you wanna see more videos like this or you wanna see where we go next, please consider subscribing. Before we get going, quick caveat for the previous six or seven videos I've done on cost of living previously, we almost always stay places for four weeks or 28 nights, we usually enter Saturday and leave the following Saturday. For Guadalajara, we actually stayed 32 nights. Rest assured, the numbers actually look very similar and we'll talk about that more, but wanted to share that caveat before we got into it. Now, the first category, same as always, the biggest one, accommodation. So for our month in month-ish in Guadalajara, we budgeted $1,250 and we spent $1,233 on accommodation. So pretty good deal here, just slightly above our previous six month average of $1,195. Yunji didn't love this Airbnb. Look out for a future Airbnb tour to see what you think of where we stayed in Guadalajara. Now that accommodation's off the table, we can talk about my favorite category, food and beverages. So for food and beverages for the month, we budgeted $1,000. We came in at $810.46, which was just a little above our previous six month average of $785. And as I talk about these averages, we had actually stayed seven months in Mexico, six months in 2021 and one month before Guadalajara. If you wanna see any of those videos, check out the description to see any of the individual monthly cost of living videos previous to Guadalajara. Within food and beverages, I'll be breaking this down into four subcategories. So groceries, restaurants, bars, and alcohol. And we'll talk about those in a second. First, we'll talk about my favorite of those. No, we won't. We're gonna talk about groceries. So for groceries and all these subcategories, there are no forecasts or budgets, but we did spend $114.48 on groceries. This was pretty close to, but above our previous seven month average, which was $105 on groceries. Now we can talk about my favorite subcategory of food, which is restaurants. So for restaurants, we spent $560.78 on restaurants. This was very close to our previous average of $591. And we're gonna talk about bars next, but we will get into subcategories of restaurants and kind of talk about the different meals and how much we spent for that as well. For bars, we spent $135.20. This was pretty well above the average of $88. And for a bar, I'm talking about places that typically, yes, are at bars, but it's anytime we go out to get drinks and we don't eat any food. And the reason for this, I think, is Guadalajara has fantastic bars, whether they be breweries and tap rooms or craft cocktails. The bar scene in Guadalajara is fantastic and maybe my favorite in the entire country. That leads us to the next category of alcohol. So alcohol is anytime we get any alcoholic beverage, whether that's in our groceries, at a restaurant or at a bar without food, we spent $222.05. And this is under the average of $256. So this is pretty close to the, the kind of standard. Now that we've talked about groceries and booze, we can jump right back into restaurants. So I'll be breaking this category into subcategories of coffee and snacks, breakfast and brunch, lunch and dinner. So kicking off with coffee, we went out for coffee seven times and spent $45.43 on these coffee snack, coffee pastry break things. And this was up from an average of $28. The reason that average is so low is this is a category that was created mid trip. So previously, coffee and pastries or coffee and snacks were included with breakfast and brunch. Next subcategory is breakfast and brunch. So we went out for breakfast or brunch six times. We spent $80.57, which was quite a bit under the average of $111. Our most inexpensive or cheapest breakfast were barbacoa tacos for $3. They were incredible. I love barbacoa. We went to this place twice, should have gone three times, awesome. 
Most expensive brunch was $23.73 at our favorite brunch spot in Guadalajara. Hopefully this isn't spoiling future videos, but Zuno Cafe, just incredible brunch spot. Following breakfast and brunch is lunch. We went out to a lot of lunches. We went out to 13 lunches and spent $183.11. This was quite a bit over the previous average of $154. And yeah, for whatever reason, we went out to more lunches than dinners. I think one reason for this was that our favorite spots weren't open for dinner. A lot of the seafood spots we really like were open for lunch, but closed at like six. So that's very different than literally every other city we stayed in. Our most inexpensive or cheapest lunch was $2.75. This is when I went out on my own for my torta ahogada crawl video coming soon. That Those are soap sandwiches, but uh, that's how much it costs for one. Super, super bomb. And our most expensive lunch was $28.93 at one of our favorite seafood places. These tostadas were incredible. The ice cream was incredible, the vibe, just very, very cool. You'll definitely be seeing that spot in many upcoming Guadalajara vlogs. In our last restaurant subcategory is dinner. We went out nine times, which is a little on the low side. Usually we go out to more dinners than any other meal, but kind of explain that why that is. We spent $251.67 on those nine dinners. This was actually a little below the average of $291. And the reason it was below that is we just didn't go to as many dinners. Our most inexpensive or cheapest dinner was at a carne in, so in su jugo spot. So that's meat in its juices. It's delicious. We went to this place twice. It's got the Guinness record for like fastest service and the food is just really, really good. Again, you'll see that upcoming. And then our most expensive dinner was $58.08 at a place called El Gallo Altanero. It's more of like a bar, but the food is very good. And the reason this dinner cost so much is we went there early and had many, many drinks, but rest assured the food is very good. We went back and tried more food another time and it's just a really good spot. Unfortunately, we're done talking about food for now. If you're hungry and wanna see more food videos, please hit my channel, cause that's the bulk of my videos. The next category is miscellaneous and activities. So anything that kind of falls outside of food and beverage and, and some of the other categories, we usually budget $50 for miscellaneous and activities and we came in at $51.70. This was quite a bit over our previous seven month average of $40. And the main reason this one was kind of over budget was we had to pay for COVID tests. So for two of us to get COVID tests, again, we went to Pharmacia, Del Aoro, and this was actually $30 for two people. Not sure why this one was cheaper than Playa del Carmen, but I think they forgot to charge us tax or something. Not a ton of activities. We didn't go to tequila or like do any day trips. We mostly just kind of hung out in the city. So the bulk of miscellaneous were those COVID tests and just kind of like one-off buying fruit or going to the flower market or like just buying beer. In our last category, before we get to the big reveal, transportation. So we typically budget $200 a month for transportation and that would include flights. For this video, I'm not including this in this category. So we spent $23.06 and that was mostly for Ubers in town or to and from the airport. Our flight costs to get from Mexico City to Guadalajara were actually very inexpensive. So $76.74 for both of us to get from Mexico City to Guadalajara. And then to get from the US to Mexico and back, our flights were $228.27 per person. And we actually flew LAX into Mexico City and then Guadalajara back to LAX. And those tickets were about $228 each or about $450 for two. And what you've all been waiting for, or maybe you cheated and used the video chapters, which congrats, I don't think many people use my video chapters, but for our total spend for the month-ish in Guadalajara, we forecasted or budgeted $2,500 for the month. We spent $2,118.22, so coming in well under budget. That was very, very close to our previous seven month average of $2,064. And it was pretty well under our highest month, which was the first stint in Mexico City at $2,414. And it was still well above our cheapest month in Puebla that came in at $1,634.
And the reason why I think this month kind of worked out is our rent price was pretty good. My mom also visited us in Guadalajara, but it was only for three days. Whereas when she visited in Mexico City, it was like five or five and a half days. So I don't think anything was too largely skewed. And the fact that we stayed four more nights than we typically do and the fact she visited for three i think that's that washed out and made every all the numbers kind of work out the way they did and with that we can kind of just talk about the few areas where i think we could save more or you could take my numbers and be like yeah let's like shave that down further so the first one and i bring it up all the time but it's airbnb and accommodations so if you can do something longer term or you can sign a lease or you have a friend or someone through like a Facebook expat group, that'll be the top place to drive down costs. There were cheaper Airbnbs that were available, but they were a lot smaller. I think there were a handful for like $700 and they looked nice enough and clean enough. They just like didn't have living rooms, but that would be a quick way to save, you know, over $500 a month. The other one I kind of alluded to, just slower travel is gonna be cheaper. So if you stay in Guadalajara for a month or a few months or a year, it's gonna be way cheaper than if you just come for three nights or one week. We stay places four weeks to get that uh, Airbnb long stay budget. But the longer you stay places, you're just gonna save more because you know less moving around, less having to buy and like waste groceries, etc. We, even though we didn't spend a ton on food, we do eat out basically Thursday through Sunday, or we do Thursday dinner, all our meals out Friday, all our meals out Saturday, and like Sunday brunch. So if you're looking at my numbers and you're still like, I don't think myself or myself and the person I travel with need to spend a thousand dollars or eight hundred and fifty dollars. I'm sure you could shave off a few hundred dollars there. The place we could all shave is alcohol. So we spent I think about 200 ish on alcohol that could a hundred percent be erased. And then the last thing could just be less Ubers and more just like walk, walking and cycling. There's not a ton of public trans in Guadalajara. There are bicycles that are a pretty good deal the longer you stay. Otherwise, you probably are going to need to Uber to and from the airport unless you wanna take a public bus that I didn't look into. Hopefully my numbers are helpful to you. Please let me know if you think I'm crazy and spent way too much. Please let me know if you think there's no way I could have spent this little. And if there's any questions you have on any of my spend, um, but or if there's any like categories or anything you want clarified, please let me know. But hopefully these numbers help you. If you're thinking about planning a trip to Guadalajara or thinking about moving there, please let me know in the comments and happy to answer any questions you may have. Thanks so much for hanging out if you've made it this far in the video and we will be back Saturday with another video. So see you soon.